Hi again. Okay, we're going to rejoin the concept of variance here, and so let's go back through uh, a few big important concepts. So, a summation symbol is represented here by this sigma. So, sigma is just simply saying, hey, add up everything that comes after it. Add them all up. In this case, add up all the x sub i's. And we know that i is a, is a subscript just standing for any individual observation. Any individual. So it could be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. It's just any individual in a series. We know that we can calculate the mean, which we'll call here x bar. We, call, we can calculate the mean x bar by the sum of all of the x i's uh, divided by n which is our total sample size here. Let me rewrite that. And in this case, we've added some notation where i uh, equals 1 and then n um, are on either end of the summation symbol, the top and bottom. And that is simply to indicate where we start in our summation and where we end in our summation. So just like the sum of the xi's goes from the first one to the nth um, observation, put a th there, that would be the nth observation. When we take the mean, or x bar, we're going to go from the first observation to the nth observation, add them all up, and divide by n. Last time we talked about variance, so we're coming back to the concept of variance, often called s squared. And when we're talking about the whole population, and the actual variance estimate, we take the sum of all of the individual observations, subtracting off the mean to see how far away from the mean each individual observation is. We square that because positives and negatives are going to cancel each other if we add them all up. And then we end up with a number that we can divide by n, and we have something equivalent to um, a higher amount of deviation from a mean will give us a higher number. Um, so we have some number that is going to scale with how variable our populations are. If we're looking at population A, and let's just call this size on our graph, and we have a number of distinct observations for population A, and an overall mean represented by the line I just drew there, the further that each observation is from that mean, the further each of these is from the mean, will result in a larger number here that's squared. When we add all of the distances from that mean up, square, we add, take all the distances, we square them, we add them all up, and then we divide by the number of observations. If a population is more distant from, the individual observations are more distant from the mean, we're going to end up with a larger number that's more variable, right? Higher variance. And we're just dividing by the total number there because obviously we have more things to add up. We're going to get a bigger number. And so we want to account for that by dividing by how many things we've added up. But there are a couple problems. And so one of the problems is that we're often taking a sample from a larger unknown population. We often can't census the entire population. You can't measure every tree, you can't measure every wildflower, and you can't measure every bird. So we have to sample. And because of that, we're always estimating something based on a few knowns. So one trick that statistics have used and something that they've found uh, through trial and error, uh, statisticians have used and they've, they've found through trial and error is that Instead of dividing by n here, we can divide by what we're going to start to call the degrees of freedom. Or in this case, we're going to call it n minus 1. And we'll have another little lecture that talks about what degrees of freedom is. But for us, we're going to divide by n minus 1 instead of 1. We're kind of accounting for the fact that this is a sample by subtracting 1 fewer than our total number of observations. When we do this, we've actually measured what's called the sample variance rather than the true variance, which is an important concept. So last time we ended with variance, and here we are with sample 
variance. I've got some other things on the board here that I want to talk about. So this thing that I just drew uh, a shape around uh, is a really important concept. So the more time you can spend understanding that, the better. We'll get to an example here in the next video. Very quickly, I want to point out that because we squared this, you might be wondering, well, that's kind of an odd measurement. Why would we, you know, we squared it. I know we did that to deal with negatives and positives, but we still end up with a squared number. So what if we take the square root of that number and then we'll come out at something simpler? Indeed, we do. In fact, what we come out at is kind of an average deviance of an individual measurement from its mean, otherwise known as the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of uh, square root of that variance number gives us the standard deviation. There are a few other important terms. Standard error is a measurement that is commonly used in statistics, and you'll be encouraged to use it often in your figures, um, if not by um, myself and your other faculty. Uh, it will be by a graduate advisor or other people because the standard error is a complex concept, but it's a similar measurement of error, but it tends to be smaller, and so it looks a little better on graphs. Weird reason to include it on a graph or not, but it happens. So this is often referred to as the S dot E, or the standard error. So that's a good one to know about. Another measurement of error that's very common is referred to as the coefficient of variation, or the CV. The coefficient of variation, of course, is just uh, that standard um, uh, deviation divided by the mean. And so that gives you a measure of the standard deviation relative to the mean for the whole population. So all of these are important measurements of variation uh, in your sample. Uh, but there are a few that are really key. Variance is really important because it's going to take us to the next level when it comes to understanding other things that are going in and on in our population and whether they'd occur doing the due to chance or not. Really important equation. Standard deviation is really important because as a single measure, that's the best measure of the average variation of an individual point from its mean. And standard error is really important because it's a small number. It's commonly represented um, as a measure of variability in graphs. Coefficient of variation tells you about how much standard deviation you have relative to the size of the mean you're measuring. Okay, so next up, we're going to take these numbers here, and uh, we're going to take these numbers and we're going to calculate this out. We're going to calculate out a few of these examples.